an important role for the Minister to play uh, to convince people it is necessary to uh, conserve uh, and to reuse, etc. etc. Could I ask the Minister what words in the ad uh, were abhorrent to himself or which he disagreed with? Well, I mean, first of all, could I, I just make a comment on this, since the members made a long <coughs> comment on uh, this issue? Uh, first of all, the Holocaust, and the point has been made, was a fact. I mean, there were, there were bodies found. This is a theory, so I don't think that one can draw the, the parallel. Secondly, um, I, mean, I, I do find it rather difficult to take the member seriously when he says that he, people may say, think that I am not taking this issue seriously. Um, because, you know, one thing which, and I've had hundreds, literally hundreds of people who have written to me since uh, the, the, this controversy. And the one thing which came out very clearly is that many of them object to this because they feel that those who make pronouncements are making demands on ordinary people that they are not prepared to have made on themselves. And the member is a very good example. He, and I did some work and on, on some research on him, he has circumnavigated the world once during his parliamentary duties or his assembly duties last year with um, producing um, a, a carbon footprint of 10.74 tonnes. Now, there's a perfectly good train service from his constituency. Had he used the train, he would have only produced 2.45 tonnes. Now, I think before he starts preaching about taking this issue seriously, maybe he should look at his own lifestyle. And then maybe his constituents and the public in Northern Ireland might well feel that since there's an example being set by someone who believes so passionately in this, that then maybe they should follow suit. And you know, I, I think that uh, before these kind of um, <coughs> clever pronouncements are made, maybe members should, should bear that in mind. The point which I made, and I made two points about the, the, um, the, the Act on CO2 ad, was first of all, we, and there was a constitutional point. We have now got devolved responsibilities for this issue. And if the member is now saying to me that when a minister from Westminster, when a minister from Westminster says it doesn't matter what the view of the devolved administrations uh, across the United Kingdom are. We have decided on this. We are not even prepared to enter into any discussion about what changes should be made. Then I think that I was probably standing up for the rights of the devolved administration. The Scottish administration actually took the same view, and don't show the, don't use the ad in Scotland either. Um, so, uh, so I think that's the first thing. And the second thing, and the, and the, the, the second thing, well, and we have our own ad. And again, I, th I wish the member would listen. The Energy Saving Trust have got an energy saving ad which runs an, a, in Northern Ireland. So don't run away with this idea that somehow or other we are trying to keep the people in Northern Ireland in the dark about um, the, the energy saving. We do have, and we run that, and, and as I say, it, it is distributed in a, a host of different ways to people um, in Northern Ireland. There, there, there is one part, of course, of the, the, the message which comes through in the, in, and is common to all of the Act on CO2 ads, and that is this um, link between turning off the lights and saving the world. And I, mean, I, I can understand why it is important that that message be got over by a government which um, has uh, now uh, so many policies, so many intrusive policies, and in, is, is envisages introducing even more intrusive policies on people's lives. I can understand why they want to get that subliminal uh, message and that, that message over about when you do this, you're saving the world in some way, because that's the only way the government is going to succeed in getting people to accept the draconian levels of taxation which are coming down the, the, the road, the draconian increases in energy prices, the restrictions on air travel and all of the other plethora 
of policies which, um, if you listen to Lord Turner and King, um, they have, to the point, I mean, Lord King's latest one is that he's going to give us all a carbon credit card. So when you go to buy your petrol or when you go to pay your electricity bill, you'll have carbon credits taken off. And if you happen to use too much, then you'll have to buy more credits for the card. Now, those are the kind of policies which are currently being discussed and seriously um, put forward by those who uh, take the view that climate change is man-made. And to get people to accept that, then you've got to persuade them that, they've, that there, there's something, some drastic uh, things coming down the road, and indeed, I mean, some of the, the the people who are behind us have made no bones about it. Sir John Houghton, who was the, one of the, ch the previous chairman of the IPPC, uh, uh, indicated that unless we tell people horror stories, they're not going to change their their, their behaviour. Um, so, you know, that's why I think that um, I had a, a particular objection to that part. But I have no objection to the energy saving part, and indeed, we meet our obligations when it comes to persuading people to save energy. And as I say, I hope, Mr McClarty, the, the lesson which I have given you in your own personal uh, behaviour might uh, enable you to change and to lead and give an example to your constituents. Chairman, could the Minister give us his own uh, carbon footprint? Uh, have you studied that? No, I haven't. And, I mean, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you one of the reasons why I am not exercised about my carbon footprint. I am simply giving the information to those who seem to be deeply exercised about this. The one thing I don't believe in is wasting money unnecessarily from when I was a wee boy and, and brought up in a home where there wasn't a great deal of money around. Um, I was always told, look, don't be wasteful. So I tend, I do my best not to be wasteful, but I do it because I believe it makes good common sense, not because I believe that in doing so I'm saving the world.